Hey everybody, this is David with the very first tutorial on how to use Layer Slayer. Now, you can do a lot with Layer Slayer, but for the purposes of getting started and knowing the basics, I'm going to keep this tutorial really simple. For more advanced work and to go deeper into some of the options, check out the other tutorials. Here we have my logo and Jean-Claude Van Damme, who can't handle the awesomeness of Layer Slayer and is trying to destroy it. Now, as the logo moves through the scene, I want it to appear at different levels in the comp. For example, in the beginning, it starts in front of Jean-Claude Van Damme, or JCVD, as I'm going to keep calling him. And then before he strikes the first time, we want it to pop behind him, which means the layer has to go here. And then later on, we want it behind that layer, and then we'll want it back between them and in front again. Now, of course, one layer can only have one position in the layer stack, so we have no choice but to split the layer. We then would take the duplicate and put it where we need it. So at this point, my logo goes from being in front of him to behind him. And if I continue, I would need to do this several times to finish my scene. What we end up with is three copies of my original layer, which is over here. And those copies will place the visual content at the level I need it, at the time I need it. Now the problem with this is that they're completely unconnected from each other. If I then add some effects to my original layer, Those effects are now absent from the copy layers, and I need to keep updating them. And if I'm still building my comp, and I'm changing things all the time in the original, I don't want to have to remember to update every little change to all my copy layers. In this comp, it's simple. There are only three. But you could have three, four, five, or 50 different copy layers, depending on how complex your comp is. Now, Layer Slayer does all this and makes it dead simple. No matter how many copy layers you have, it'll just be one click to update your changes to the duplicates, whether those changes are effects, motion, track matting, parenting, and so on. So let's back up and do this the right way with Layer Slayer. And I'll remove these effects. Now the first thing is to open up the Layer Slayer panel found under the window menu. And here we get a dockable UI panel, which changes its layout depending on the shape of the box. And it'll work with whatever workspace you have at the moment. I like to put mine right over here. Now we're going to add special duplicate layers that are perfectly synced to the original layer. These duplicates are called Slayers, and the original is going to be called the Master. So let's make sure my Master is selected and go to the place where I want the visuals to now go behind JCVD to the next layer. Then I just click the Add button, and we get this new layer called a Slayer. So now we have a Master and a Slayer. I'm going to put the Slayer at the correct level in the layer stack, right here. So as I go from Master to Slayer, the logo pops behind JCVD. And if we keep going, at this point, I want it behind him. So I'll just keep using that same Slayer, put it behind. And then as he ducks down, when he, when he comes back up, I want it to be in front of him. And currently, it's behind. So I'm actually going to add another Slayer. By selecting this one, I can select a Slayer or a Master. They're I can select a Slayer or a Master of the same group. So here I'm going to select the Slayer and click Add again. And I'll take that layer and put it between them. So he's in front, and then when he gets back up, he's behind. Moving along, at about this point, I want it to move in front of him again. So if I go right here, and click it again, now I have a Slayer that goes in front. So 
So far, it's similar to just duplicating the layers. And that's because we have no choice. You do need different layers in, at different points in the layer stack to show the content where you need it. Now, the advantage to using Layer Slayer is after you've done that, everything is synced up. So let's go and add those effects back to the master layer. As you can see in the beginning, the effects show up. And now they haven't been added to the duplicates. Instead of copying the effects to the duplicates, all I have to do is push the update button. Now all five of those color correction effects have been transferred to the Slayer layers. And any change I make in the master, as soon as I click Update, those changes are moved into the Slayers. This allows me to keep uh, a collection of layers that behave like one layer. Everything is driven by the master layer, and when I make a change, I click Update, and no matter what the change is, it goes to the Slayer layers. Even the label color can be changed. And when I click Update, the Slayers will have the same label color. Now, notice how I needed to be in this part of the comp where I can see directly to my master layer uh, in order to make a change in real time. If I go over here, where this Slayer is active, and then I try to edit uh, that same blur, I won't see the change. I won't see the change until I hit Update. So I need to be over here to see the change in real time. Now, one way around this is to live link the property so that I can see the change no matter where I am in my timeline, regardless of which Slayer is being shown. So in this case, I'm going to select the blurriness and click the Live Link Expression button right here. This added a special expression to my property. I'm going to click Update. And now that property is linked across all my Slayers in real time. Watch. No matter where I go in the timeline, I can now edit this blur and I'll see the change in real time. Now I can use the same approach with the motion path. For example, here, I'm not happy with the way it jumps behind him. It looks like it goes through him. At this point in the path, I actually want my logo to move over to the right. But when I did that, I introduced a jump in the motion right here when it crosses over to this Slayer. And that's obviously because the motion has not been updated to the Slayer. So I need to click Update to get a smooth playback. But if I'm trying to finesse the motion path and I really want to see the change uh, in real time, I really want to tweak my keyframes and scrub and see what happens, I don't want to keep pressing Update every time. And what's more, if I'm over here while the Slayer is active and I try and edit my logo's motion path, I need to guess and then click Update. So really, I want all this to happen in real time. So again, I'm going to use the Live Link expression on my position. Select the position and click Live Link. Update it, and now that link should be present in all the Slayers. No matter where I go, I can edit my motion path and I'll see the result right away. So going back to this part, I want to make sure that the logo clears his arm before it goes behind him. So actually right here, I need this keyframe to be a little bit further and I can check that right away. And that seems to work. And now I can keep going and edit the motion path in my master layer throughout the entire comp without worrying about pushing update, and I'll be able to see the results in real time. That allows me to make my changes relative to what 
my other footage is doing. And in keeping with this idea that these layers are all one layer, Layer Slayer provides these switch buttons, which are similar to these, but they act on the group as a whole. For example, I can turn off all my Slayers using this button. I can solo them with this button, lock them, or turn them into shy layers and hide them all together. So now we have a basic arrangement of layers that really all behave as one layer, as much as possible. Whatever I change in my original master layer, whether it's motion, visual effects, parenting, track matting, or blend modes, or adjustment layers, that change will show up in the Slayer when I push update. Thanks for watching, and I'll be back with more.